in my last video, I talked about greedy publishers, shareholders, and the faith it is nostalgia. In this video, we'll explore some practical tips and strategies for players to reignite the excitement and joy of gaming. From adding surprise and variety to gameplay mechanics to fostering out-of-the-box thinking and inventive ways to enjoy our favorite games. We'll show you how to make games fun again and unlock the full potential of this beloved pastime. Let's get started. I am Divine Hybrid, and this is how to make games fun again. Cut back on fast food games. What do I mean by fast food games? Anything that gives you instant gratification and a dopamine hit. The number one example of a fast food game is Call of Duty. It's very easy to spawn in, get kills to get that instant gratification. The hit markers, the death sounds, the numbers flashing on your screen. Other games that could provide instant gratification include Fortnite, Apex, Halo, etc. I'm not saying you should stop playing these games, but more or less put a little less time into them so you can appreciate the other things in the gaming space. The average attention span is shrinking as time trudges on. In the year 2000, the average attention span was just 12 seconds. In 2015, it fell drastically to 8.25 seconds. And recent research has shown that we now have a shorter attention span on average than a goldfish. Not even joking. Not a joke. But this is also estimated around 9 seconds. Which means we want information and we want it as fast as possible. In fast food games, that's what's being served to you. Get a couple kills in Call of Duty, in about 2 seconds you'll have another kill or you'll die to repeat the process again when you respawn. It's a similar effect of watching short form content like TikTok or YouTube shorts. Once you're done, it's on to the next at a rapid pace. But it's not all doom and gloom because we have something way more immersive coming up and that is single player games. Everyone loves playing games with their friends, I get it, but some of us refuse to play games unless it's multiplayer. But these people fail to remember that there are some amazing worlds with fantastic stories to tell. My personal favorite is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. The world is so immersive and beautiful with great characters and situations that require the player's sense of humanity and social problem solving. If that's not your speed, maybe try a game like Skyrim and make your own adventure. Maybe you enjoy the Victorian era of Dishonored. If RPGs aren't your type and you need that first person shooter style, then look into the Wolfenstein games. The New Order is a fantastic story about alternate history World War II. Electronic Arts once said that no one wants single player games anymore, but pushback from gamers and consumer surveys say otherwise. Take a look at this media research shown on screen. Single player games are far from dead. They may not appeal to the AAA projections right now. Next thing I'm going to talk about will be a blessing to those who love single player experiences. Explore the indie market. It's easy to pick up a game from a AAA publisher, but if you look beyond that, you'll find the indie market. Small dev teams funding their projects through crowdfunding or by grants from certain publishers while maintaining their indie status. Epic Games is very well known for this with the Epic Games grant. This is where the originality shines. Did you know Minecraft started as an indie game? That's right, the best selling game of all time was originally an independently developed game until Microsoft acquired the rights to Minecraft and purchase the entire dev studio under their umbrella. Indies can be as simple as a 2D side-scroller to a AAA quality game with more emphasis on quality. Stardew Valley was made by one man independently and is a blast to play. One game I've really been enjoying lately is Cruelty Squad. With its unique art style similar to that of LSD Dream Emulator, way back on the PlayStation 1, and a ton of inspiration from Super Mario 64. There are dedicated websites for developers like H.io covered with tech demos and full-fledged games for a fraction of the cost of the newest release. And more and more indie games are being brought over to console too, so console is not excluded here. A quick Google search will help you find the next indie darling. But what if you have a game you love but don't want to stop playing yet struggle to stay invested in? Well, I have good news. Let's say you just booted up into a Minecraft world, for example. You punch trees, you build a crappy shelter, you follow the numbers, all that. But what if instead of rushing the Ender Dragon, 
you decide to turn Minecraft into Terraria. Find the nearest village and make houses for every villager and make them have their own job. One of each villager. Then level those villagers to the max with trading. Maybe make one big skyscraper and put them on multiple floors. Make like a giant skyscraper mall. When you set a goal, you feel compelled to achieve it. And you'll be so happy to look back on what you've done. Spending all that time working on it. And it can inspire you to set more goals and get more out of your game. I completed The Witcher 3 on Death March at New Game Plus twice. And got all the Witcher gear, upgraded every piece to Grandmaster, and proudly display it in my home in Corvo, Corvo Bianco. It took me around 200 hours to do this, and I enjoyed almost every second of it. So do give this one a try. And as a quick bonus one here, it's not part of my list, but it's an honorable mention, and that's mods. Mainly because mods are primarily a PC thing and console is kind of missing out on it. Many games have mods. Head over to nexusmods.com and see if the game that you want to mod has mods. Minecraft has mod packs through CurseForge where you can add individual mods with a simple search on Google. Just a quick one to throw out there. That's going to do it for this video ladies and gents. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'd like to give a special thank you to each and every one of my subscribers, viewers, likers, everything. I'm coming up on my 10 year mark here on YouTube and though I'm still a small channel, I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to make videos for people and I'm working tirelessly to up my quality here to bring you great content to enjoy for years to come. I started off as just a guy with a, uh, I was 14 and I had a crappy laptop, couldn't even run Bandicam. Anyone remember Bandicam? It's crazy, right? And I was using a 3DS camera to record my laptop screen for Minecraft. And it was like maybe eight, nine frames because the laptop, it was two gigs of RAM on a Celeron. You could probably imagine, <laughs> but you know, humble beginnings, right? But, uh, that's a story for another time. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming by again and I hope you have a great day. You can tell them all you're here to stay.